All right, y'all. JC the Sniper here again, um, and I've got yet another blade review for y'all. Um, and this time, I've got the Cold Steel Large Voyager to review. Um, I know a lot of you probably know about this knife. This is a pretty uh, famous knife, um, and for good reason. Uh, it's a very good knife. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, First of all, we'll just get the specs out of the way. Um, the blade length on this is 4 inches. Handle length is a little over 5. Um, so overall length is about 9 and a quarter. Uh, the steel is a VG1 um, because this is the older Voyager. Uh, and it's got obviously a, a shiny finish. Um, I don't know what you call that. It's not stone washed, not really satin. Um, I don't know. It's a nice finish though. I like it. Um, the weight on these is I think 2.8 ounces, something like that. There's no stainless steel liners in it. Um, I don't know the exact numbers because uh, Cold Steel has the new Voyager for sale. This one hasn't been for sale for a couple of years. Um, I think they went to, and they were going to a new one in 2010. Something happened, and they didn't actually offer them for sale. I don't know what, what the deal was with that, but, uh, I don't know. They said something about them not meeting their specifications or something. I don't know. Um, but they now have, for 2011, they have the new Voyager out, um, which looks, let's see if you can see it. Yeah, looks something like that. Um, you can see there's a different handle style that's got some grooves in it and stuff as compared to this one. Um, I think I prefer the looks of this better. I think that's probably going to hold in your hand a little nicer, but, you know, I don't know. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but it says there this is going to be in an OS 8 steel. Um, so they're getting rid of the VG1, which this is, and going with an OS 8. Um, that's a little stupid, I think. I mean, they're downgrading steels. Um, so, I don't know. Seems a little bit weird to me. I don't know why you would downgrade your steel. Um, but this new one also weighs 4.6 ounces. Um, now, I don't know if that's because they're putting steel liners in it or something. Because um, it still just says the handle is Grivery. I believe this one is FRN. Um, so, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Maybe I'll have to pick one of those up and I'll do a comparison at some point. Um, but as you can see there, it says currently on back order. So, probably no chance of getting one of those for a little while. Anyway... Um, guess that's about enough on the specs. Uh, blade steel on this is actually a VG1. Um, which, this is the only blade you can see right there. It says VG1 stainless. Um, this is the only blade I have in VG1. Um, so, I don't know too much about it, honestly. However... I find that it's held its edge pretty well, um, and it came razor sharp out of the box, so clearly has good edge capabilities, uh, and I like that, um, and it hasn't seemed to rust any. Now, Cold Steel claims that they compared, you can see there it says made in Japan, uh, once again, I don't care where it's made as long as it's made well, and this is another knife that Cold Steel has made well. Um, Anyway, the Cold Steel website says that they compared, you know, OS 8 and VG10, which is what uh, Spyderco uses in a lot of its knives. See there on the Enduro where it says VG10. Um, they say they compared all these steels together and they found that VG1 had the best edge capabilities and uh, rust resistance and strength and all that stuff. So, you know, it's coming from the Cold Steel website. It might just be a lot of hype. 
but uh, more than likely there's probably some truth behind it. I mean, it would make sense to me that they compared the seals and figured out which one was best for their purposes. Now they've gone to an OS 8 now for these, um, so clearly they've not really been basing that decision on edge retention and blah 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 because if they did if they compared OS 8 and VG10 steel they'd have gone with VG10 uh, so I'm guessing they're probably just trying to lower the price of their knives a little bit um, maybe to appeal to a wider audience I don't know um, but it has come a little bit cheaper because I believe these used to be 90 bucks and now MSRP is 70 um, so you know a little bit cheaper uh, but blade steel on this is pretty good. Seems to have good edge retention. I don't know about sharpening because I haven't tried to sharpen it yet. Um, and rust resistance, well it hasn't rusted on me yet. But as previously stated, I keep my blades oiled and I take good care of them. So I wouldn't really ever get a blade that's going to rust. Um, but it is a stainless so it shouldn't rust too badly. Um, I guess we'll see. If I have some rust problems in the future, I'll update this. Um, the blade shape for EDC is actually pretty good. Um, you've got a nice amount of belly there. Um, it is a clip point Bowie design, uh, which I think is pretty pretty sweet looking. Uh, hollow ground from about two thirds of the way up the blade. Uh, so, you know, hollow grind gives you a nice sharp edge when you don't have a full a full grind like a, a full flat ground Endura um, so you know that's pretty decent um, unsharpened back swedge on there now you could sharpen that wouldn't be too hard but I probably wouldn't recommend it since it's a folding knife and this is going to be exposed all the time uh, so probably not the best idea but it looks pretty cool um, and I like the way the blade starts, you know, at this thickness, and it gets a little bit wider. And I, I like that. I think it looks kind of cool. It gets aesthetically pleasing. Um, and so for EDC, you get a good amount of belly, but you have a nice long blade. You know, it'd be good for slicing some some food up or something. Um, you also get a nice point for, you know, if you need need the point to drill something or some such nonsense. Now for defensive purposes it's also an excellent blade um, you know you've got a four inch blade that you could definitely make some nice slicing attacks with um, you got that good belly on there that lay somebody open if you got them with that um, but you also get a very very nice piercing tip um, with that that drop or clip point blade you know you get a really nice piercing tip that's still pretty strong um, you know it doesn't taper nearly as much as the uh, Endura does. You know, it still comes to a fine point, but it's not as fine for as long. Um, so that's pretty nice, and it gives you a nice sharp tip that you could definitely thrust and make make some really, really good thrust cuts with it. Uh, so for defensive purposes, that's an excellent blade shape. Um, speed of deployment, deployment method, obviously deployment method is a thumb stud. However, it deploys very nicely. Um, probably with a little bit, well, I don't know. Probably about the same effort as an Endura. You know, I can deploy them without a wrist flip. If you have good technique with with most knives, you can deploy it without a wrist flip. Now, it's a little bit easier with a little bit of a flip. Um, with this Voyager, don't really need a flip. Uh, I can pop it out pretty easily. And once again, a little bit of a flip makes it quicker, but... It's very, very quick deployment, and of course, you can pop it open without the uh, thumb stud. It works that way, too, but uh, for the most part, I'm probably going to deploy it with a thumb stud. So, very, very quick deployment. I like that. Um, Lockup and strength. Lockup is excellent on this knife. Now, the strength is going to be a little bit lower than some because there's no liners. Um, you know, this Endure is probably going to be a little bit stronger just because it's got steel liners in there, which you can't really see. There you go. You know, you see those steel liners in there. Um, that's going to make it a little bit a little bit stronger because this is just plastic. Um, or I, I believe it's FRN. So, you know, it's strong, but it's not as strong. 
Now that's not a problem because you're not going to be spine whacking this thing or batoning. It's not good for those purposes. That's not what it's meant for. But uh, for EDC or emergency defensive roll, it's going to be adequately strong. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend prying with it, but I wouldn't recommend prying with any knife. Um, but the lockup is excellent. No wiggle whatsoever in any direction. So excellent, excellent lockup. And uh, strength is good. Lock back, so the strength of the lock is very good. Um, I like lock backing designs. And uh, one thing about this lock back is there's that dent there. So there's like a half stop location. You see there is where it locks into that half stop. Um, so I guess that's for closing it so that you don't cut yourself. It stops there so you don't close it on your fingers. You get your fingers out of the way and then close it the rest of the way. I don't need that. I've never, well, I, <laughs> I have closed knives on my fingers, but I've never had a problem with that where I'm like, oh, you know, they need to do something about this. This is really dangerous, but... I guess you might like that. It's kind of cool. You can see there it does provide a pretty good amount of resistance. Um, handle, as I said, I think this is FRN. Um, I don't believe this is the Grivery just because I have other Grivery knives and this is, does not feel like Grivery. Um, feels more like FRN. So I think it's FRN. Um, now, Spyderco's Volcano Grip is definitely more grippy than this. Um, this texturing is honestly not that effective. Um, you can see it there. But it does provide, I will say, adequate traction, you know, medium traction ability. Um, you got some jimping on the back here, which does squat. Um, no, no use whatsoever. Just slides right over it. Um, you know, and then that, the back is completely smooth. No jimping on the blade or no thumb ramp. Um, so, you could definitely slide up on this knife. However, the handle grips pretty well, and it flares up a little bit here in front. Not a choil, but it does flare some. Um, and this traction does provide some grip to you. So, if you get a good grip on this, you won't slide forward as easily. But you've got to grip this thing good. Um, not like an Endura, where you've got that thumb ramp and jimping and little choil up here. There's no way you're coming forward on that. Uh, you could conceivably come forward on this, so you're going to have to be careful of that. Um, the shape of the handle is nice, though. Um, gets larger at the end, so you're not going to slip back off of it. Uh, so slipping back isn't a problem. You use that to crack somebody with. Um, slipping forward is going to be the issue. And you can see there it's kind of curved for your fingers, and uh, the surfaces are radius nicely, so it's it's very comfortable in hand. Um, I like the shape, it's comfy. Just wish there was some jimping back here uh, to hold my thumb in place. But there's not, I'll deal with it. Um, clip design is good. You know, it's just a slightly curved clip. Three screws hold it in place, blackened nicely. Um, about that much of the knife does stick out of your pocket. So I'm not a huge fan of that because that's kind of a big chunk of plastic. But it's black and it's square, so it doesn't really look like a knife. Um, there is a lanyard hole there, as you can see. Uh, not pillared construction, so you can't really clean it out very well. Um, and also, you can see there, this knife is a pinned construction knife. Um, so there isn't any wiggle right now, but if any does develop there's not really any way for you to adjust it. Now I guess you could take some pliers and maybe squeeze down that on that thing and try to tighten it up but it's going to be difficult so I guess I'll probably update this in the future if it loosens up. Uh, it's tight right now but you never know. Um, so clip design is good but only if you're right handed and you like tip up carry because that's the only option you get. No left handed option, no tip down option. So for me it's excellent. Uh, for lefties, you're screwed. Sorry. <laughs> Overall, though, good knife. Um, I think it's an excellent knife for EDC or emergency tactical purposes. Um, for emergency tactical, I'd probably rather go with a Spyderco Endura. Um, just gives me some better options for not slipping forward on the blade. Um, but still, if you don't like the Endura or you prefer a thumb stud, the Cold Steel Large Voyager would be an excellent blade to have. JC the Sniper, 
signing off.